while some affect the sun, and some the shade. Some flee the city, some the hermitage, their aims as various, as the roads they take in journeying through life. The task be mine, to paint the gloomy horrors of the tomb, th appointed place of rendezvous, where all these travellers meet. Thy succours I implore, eternal king, whose potent arm sustains the keys of hell and death. The grave, dread thing. Men shiver when Thorite named, nature appalled shakes off her wonted firmness. Ah, how dark the long extended realms, and rueful wastes, where naught but silence reigns, and night, dark night, dark as was chaos, ere the infant sun was rolled together, or had tried his beams athwart the gloom profound. The sickly taper, by glimmering throw thy low-browed misty vaults, furred round with mouldy damps, and ropey slime, lets fall a supernumerary horror, and only serves to make thy night more irksome. Well do I know thee by thy trusty you, cheerless, unsocial plant that loves to dwell midst skulls and coffins, epitaphs and worms, where light-heeled ghosts, and visionary shades, beneath their wan, cold moon, as fame reports, embodied thick, perform their mystic rounds, no other merriment, dull tree, is thine. See yonder hallowed fane, the pious work of names once famed, now dubious or forgot, and buried midst the wreck of things which were, there lie into the more illustrious dead. The wind is up, hark how it howls. Methinks, till now, I never heard a sound so dreary, doors creak, and windows clap, and night's foul bird, rook d in the spire, screams loud, the gloomy aisles black plastered, and hung round with shreds of scutcheons, and tattered coats of arms, send back the sound, laden with heavier airs, from the low vaults, the mansions of the dead, rude from their slumbers, in grim array the grisly spectres rise, grin horrible, and, obstinately sullen, pass and repass, hushed he as the foot of night. Again the screech owl shrieks ungracious sound, I'll hear no more, it makes one's blood run chill. Quite around the pile, a row of reverend elms, coeval near with that, all ragged show, long lashed deep by the rude winds. Some rift half down their branchless trunks, others so thin atop, that scarce two crows can lodge in the same tree. Strange things, the neighbours say, have happened here, wild shrieks have issued from the hollow tombs. Dead men have come again, and walked e about, and the great bell has tolled, unrung, untouched e. Such tales their cheer at wake or gossiping, when it draws near to witching time of night, oft in the lone churchyard at night I've seen, by glimpse of moonshine checkering through the trees, the schoolboy, with his satchel in his hand, whistling aloud to bear his courage up, and lightly tripping o'er the long flat stones, with nettles skirted, and with moss o'ergrown, that tell in homely phrase who lie below. Sudden he starts, and hears, or thinks he hears, the sound of something purring at his heels, full fast he flies, and dare not look behind him, till, out of breath, he overtakes his fellows, who gather round and wonder at the tale of horrid apparition tall and ghastly, that walks at dead of night, or takes his stand or some new opened grave, and, strange to tell, he vanishes at crowing of the cock. The new maid widow, too, I've sometimes spied, sad sight. Slow moving o'er the prostrate dead, listless, she crawls along in doleful black, while bursts of sorrow gush from either eye, fast falling down her now untasted cheek prone on the lowly grave of the dear man she drops, while busy meddling memory, in barbarous succession, musters up the past endearments of their softer hours, tenacious of its theme. Still, still she thinks she sees him, and indulging the fond thought, clings yet more closely to the senseless turf, nor heeds the passenger who looks that way, invidious grave. How dost thou rend in sunder whom a love has knit, and sympathy made one. A time more stubborn far than nature's band. Friendship. Mysterious cement of the soul, sweetener of life, and solder of society, I owe thee much. Thou hast deserved from me, far, far beyond what I can never pay. 
Oft have I proved the labors of thy love, and the warm efforts of the gentle heart, anxious to please. Oh, when my friend and I in some thick wood have wandered heedless on, hid from the vulgar eye, and sat us down upon the sloping cowslip covered bank, where the pure limpid stream has slid along in grateful errors through the underwood, sweet murmuring, methought the shrill tongued thrush mended his song of love, the sooty blackbird mellowed his pipe, and softened every note, the eglatine smelled sweeter, and the rose assumed a dye more deep, whilst every flower vied with its fellow plant in luxury of dress oh. Then the longest summer's day seemed too too much in haste, still the full heart had not imparted half, twas happiness too exquisite to last, of joys departed, not to return, how painful the remembrance, 